today I'm going to talk to you about Django APIs, versioning, and you. So maybe how you can use versioning and like developing your APIs and stuff in instead of, um, oh sorry, <laughs> instead of actually uh, creating a new version every time, well creating an entirely new thing every time you want to get new data in. So let's start. I had this under my notes as stuff no one cares about, but um, so I'm a junior developer in Flexera in Belfast. I'm mostly I mostly just work with Python and Go, and um, I only have a year's experience so far. So uh, please take it easy on me. <laughs> and then um, that's my social media. If you really do care that much, you send me hate mail or something like that. You can hit me. You know, so your talk sucks. Go ahead. So um, for three parts to this talk. So what is version and why should I use it? Then second, after that, is going to be nicer too. How can I effectively version Django API using the REST framework and other methods as well? Because the REST framework is really has like built-in versioning methods, which I'm going to go over, which is really good. And then I'm going to do a live-ish demo of stuff we've learned in part two. So hopefully it won't be too bad. So what is versioning? So say you're, you're a developer in the company. One day you decide to create an API, you know, as you do. Uh, once for one, for a while, everyone's happy with it, like that part over there, until, oh God, <sighs> customer decides to request changes. So say you have to take more data, less data, whatever you need to do. So you're going to be like, that chef there, oh no, I can't. But no, you can. Excuse you. <laughs> so you'd be thinking, all right, let's just make the changes. Let's go ahead. But you failed, when you're thinking about that, you failed to take into account you had users already that are using your API. You can't just do that, unfortunately. I'm sorry to shatter your hopes and dreams. You can't. Turns out you just broke the whole API. Now you're going to stay up all, all night and um, of angry customers and all that good stuff. And you're like, why did I do this? Why did I do this to myself? But, but this is how your decision can be avoided. I have the solution just for you. Um, welcome to Wonder World, world, wonderful world of versioning. Yay. So what is versioning? So basically, every time you, have to, you change the parents of your API, so the stuff it takes in, stuff it takes out, you create a new version. I mean, you can do that multiple ways. You can create like multiple different serializers in Django if you really want to, or you can even just scrap it and just create an entirely new version. Just be like, well, you're not going to use that version anymore. You can pay us big bucks and use a new version. But so, it's the best of both worlds. And I'm sorry to shout your dreams once your hopes and dreams once again. You can't just make changes. So, for I'm mostly going to concentrate on the REST, Django REST framework because that's what I use every day in work um, and stuff I'm really familiar with. Um, there is going to be methods, um, other methods considered briefly, like the Django REST framework transforms, but it's mostly just going to be focusing on the built-in stuff in the Django REST framework. So we now, like after our first bit, we now know why we should version the API, but how about the how? So, like I said here, it's not supposed to be for, well, focusing on Django REST framework, um, but it should be, like you should take these principles in any framework you want, Flask, whatever, the principles should remain the same. So, there we go. So there's various means of um, version within the Django REST framework. The fun part is, Django REST framework is pretty configurable. And like you can choose which one, what methods, like I'm going to go over. You can even roll your own if you're really insane and you hate yourself. So you can also set, so you, the font, you can set this in um, settings.py in, in your Django project. So I'm going to show you here my Vim. So, sorry, I was just doing testing earlier. So, settings.py. Can everyone read that okay? Yeah? Cool. So you can see here in the REST framework, you, have, you can set your default versioning as well. So you can set a default, you can also set allowed methods, which means if you don't want to allow, say, query versioning, then you can put that in there. Um, and most of these default to none. So I think I have it in my slides as well. So 
And you see here my handy dandy settings .py I prepared earlier. You can see here that you can set default, you can set default version. So say you want to set the default to like version 2 or version 1, wherever, you can do that. You can do a loud version. So say you want to kill off version 1 completely because it's a compile, it's a trash fire. You can do that there. And you can use, it's also a version parameter. So, so in some methods of the versioning, you specify like a version. So say you want version 1, it'll be like, in the accept header, so it'll be like version, no, uh, application.json, version point point one. So you can do that there. I just set the Python IE because it's represent, I guess. So, so the mo like, like I said before, this is actually the most common and actually re recommended as best practice to do. You set the versioning and your headers of the request. So it's a set, in, in the Django REST framework, this is set for the accept headers. So I'm going to show you a demonstration here in my client. So ignore that. There we are. So you can be like HTTP mycoolapi.com uh, cool. And you set that in the accept header, which do, 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 you didn't see that. Um, <laughs> accept application slash json and then version equals one. So you can set that there. So then you can also do your OL pass versioning, which is you set that you set that through the URL. So you it's be done through serializers and stuff as well. So we'd be like, okay, the version the parameter has been set to version one. Okay, return. So the URL be formatted like this. Um, so I got that from the, the examples from the docs. The docs are actually really good. You should definitely read those. Um, namespace versioning is when you set the namespace for in the URLs.py to wherever version you need to be. So say you want version two, you want version one, blah, blah, blah. there you are. There's host name versioning, which uses this really cool um, ver um, regular expression. Um, I don't forget regular expressions, but you can basically just say, right, right, I want this set up like this, and only matches stuff in that regular expression. You can also do query versioning, which will take a query parameter in the URL. So you can do, oh, did you know what Insomnia is open source? I didn't know that. And then query equals one, I guess. And then you can also use like built-in functions in the press framework as well. So you can use a built-in reverse function to apply any transformations that you defined before. So say you said I want the version of my API using the namespace version. So you can it will actually automatically configure the URL based on that. So I've also oh wait, sorry. <laughs> um I'm sorry. So you can be like right reverse parts, fat parts, and then if you'll apply like version point 0.1, stuff like that. But wait, I say, there's more. <laughs> um, at the, I was, when I was reading, when I was researching for this talk, um, I kind of got nerd sniped. Um, I was kind of got in this big rabbit hole, so I thought, right, I'll limit the two. So there's a really interesting library I found because, um, called, ja oh, there's a typo. Yeah. Um, Django REST Framework Transforms, which is, it, it does, I think I'll like sum it up here. This is a big wall of text, I'm sorry, but I can explain it as something that aims to get rid of boilerplate. You can often see in Django REST Framework stuff. So you can get rid of all that crap and just replace it with Transforms. So um, as you can see here, it's, you only need to do it every time you change a version. There you go. And then, as, as, as in the name, it uses a class, like er, if you want to version the API, um, there's a cl base class called base transforms that every transforms will inherit from. So it will use that to convert between version every time you write a new version. So here you can see the base class. So you can just, you just, it's really, it's actually really simple to use. You just inherit from it and then, um, then you just 
you just inherit from it, and then you just create your own tra 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 transformations. And um, yeah, this is the trash fire part of it, the live demo. <laughs> Um, so here I will show you. Um, so this is our API. So right now we have a model. We have a part API. Um, our class is called part, of course. Um, so we currently take in a part name and a part color. And then we have that set up in the um, serializer as well. And the VZ and stuff like that. Um, ignore that for now. Um, so, we currently take in that, so if I show you this running, um, okay, there we are, so, we do parrots, so, um, I've created a few parrots already, so, currently we take in just a part name and a part colour, so, part A, Icon. Oh, so we post that, and there we go. And then we have we refresh that, and then look, there's a new part. Let's say the customer comes in and says, "Well, your power API, it's good. We could use some changes." So it's like, okay, we can do that. So. We just add a new field. So party equals models car field. <coughs> equals for A. Like, all right, everything's fine and daddy. Okay, hang on, sorry. So we do that. Sorry. Make regressions. Who cares? There we are. So now we make regressions and then we do migrate. And oh, okay. So there's some breaking changes here. But we can fix that. I hope. <laughs> oh. So you can see here we have a new um, new serializer. I created it earlier. Just you know, it's like Peter, but a bit more crap. So model of a part. And then we can write a method going stuff get version self. Oh crap. Sorry, I can type, I promise. Um, so if request self dot request equals v1, then we, oh, I, I promise I can type, <laughs> um, return parrot serializer, then or else if self request equals v2, then we can re just return new serializer. So, oh, I can spell, I promise. Um, sir, v2. So, yeah, sorry, my number is freaking out. <laughs> So, yeah. Oh, sure. One, F else. Oh, crap. Else. We just return a new serializer. Sorry. So we do that. And then we can set that in the namespace. So we can just do API, say, URL, G version. Do, do, do. Life coding is fun, isn't it? <laughs> Parts include Parts include URLs. This is just a really basic one. Just probably won't work, but still. 
Um, namespace. Because we're using face, as we've seen before earlier in the sentence before, we used um, namespace version. So when you say, okay, namespace v2, and then, there we go. As simple as that. If you can believe that, I sure freak out. <laughs> Quotes. Yeah, I keep forgetting with those. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's pretty. It's actually really simple to do do stuff like that in Django framework. It's like really really simple. Um, hopefully today that I've showed you, you can probably do that yourself. Um, I probably put the API code up on GitHub if anyone really wants it. Um, if you really care, look at my crap code. Um, so um, thank you for listening. Thank you.